Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be talking LEGO Star Wars 2020 Summer Sets. Uh, one of the better waves I've uh, seen in actually a very long time. Of course, starting out here with this new image of the 501st Legion set, aka the 501st Battle Pack. And I mean, sure, the set isn't necessarily, well, no, I would, it's perfect. It is perfect. I mean, have you seen a set recently that had that amount of clone troopers? You know, and y you also get two battle droids. You get two vehicles. Look at the value of that for $30. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of Anakin's Jedi Starfighter, but it looks like kind of exactly the, the 2014 one, just with some... Uh, gray and sand blue highlights, or also like dark gray, sand blue, and black highlights. Um, I mean, I and that also retails for $30, and I'm just saying, what would you rather get for $30? I mean, I love Anakin's Jedi Interceptor, but would you rather get that or this amazing um, deal of just clone troopers, droids, vehicles? It, it, this is like, I would say, the ultimate battle pack. Like, a lot of people are complaining. You know, sure, it is worth the same price as two battle packs, but what would you rather have? Two Tatooine battle packs or this? It's obviously this. This is just one of the best things I have seen LEGO make in so long, and I hope they continue. Alright, so if you count General Grievous's Starfighter as a Clone Wars uh, set, because technically... It is within the Clone Wars era, and it has made an appearance in the Clone Wars show, even though, because of the box art, it's, uh, it's a Revenge of the Sith set. But what I'm trying to say is that, technically, this is we're halfway through the Clone Wars sets. Because uh, me, personally, I consider the 501st Legion set, uh, this set, the AAT, um, General Grievous' Starfighter, and Anakin's Starfighter. Um... Did I say General Grievous' Jedi Star? I don't know. But any anyways, so this right here is the AAT. And call me crazy, but I actually like this design. I, I think that this one and 2015's design are kind of equally bad. Well, no, n not equally bad, but I think they're equal. And you are like, okay, so you like this one. Yeah, I actually liked the 2015 one. I think both of them look like really good builds, and it's an unpopular opinion. It's a bit of a hot take, but I actually really like uh, these last two AATs, and I'm definitely picking up like four of these for my droid army. You know, um, my budget for Legos has kind of gone up a bit. Like I have like two packages sitting next to me. Um, I'm I'm getting a lot of packages in the mail and. I'm going to do kind of like a mega haul. Uh, not as big as MNRs, but um, definitely a big one. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But I'm definitely getting a lot of these because these look really cool. Um, the minifigures, obviously, we get like two of those A, like two of those like AAT heavy uh, battle droids with the green on them. Um, but Ahsoka and the 332nd Clone Trooper look very nice. Um... 332nd clone trooper a lot of people want him in a battle pack i really disagree you know maybe if we get a clone troopers battle pack with like miscellaneous clone troopers and they give us like one of him that's fine but i do not want a 332nd battle pack because we already have a 501st battle pack and at that point um you know a whole battle pack sold on just one helmet i don't think is worth it it's a waste of a battle pack slot uh, you know, you could have added 212 battle pack, a droid battle pack, a, a miscellaneous clone battle pack, a course on card battle You guys know what I mean. It's just kind of a waste of a, a slot, in my opinion. I do like the Ahsoka minifigure. Um, it, it's alright. It's honestly good with what LEGO has done. And uh, I'm curious to see how this will change the prices of previous Ahsoka minifigures. Uh, or in the future, will this Ahsoka minifigure be joining um, the, you know, the, the list of Ahsoka figures that go for a ridiculous price? Uh, but overall, I actually love this set. This is 
yet again another set that I honestly think is perfect. And I'm going to say that a lot about this wave. Uh, Anakin's Jedi Starfighter, I think I talked about it earlier, it's fine. Now, ever since I got into LEGO Star Wars back in 2014, uh, honestly, General Grievous, uh, General Grievous Starfighter is something I've always wanted a re-release of. But this is a perfect example of LEGO actually being overpriced, in my opinion. Kind of like MNR, I think it's kind of said too much. You know, LEGO is premium product, whatever. But this is, t it's crazy. It's, what, like 400-something pieces for $80, and it only comes with three minifigs. Now, these are the compromises I would have made. Either make it 50 or $60. I think um, a 55 to, to like $60 set would have actually fit this price a little more. And even so, I think it, de it deserves another minifigure. And, you know, I think the only thing that would have made this actually worth $80 is a Phase 2 Cody. But hey, if they're saving a Phase 2 Cody for the UCS gunship next year, then as much as I'm okay with that, you know, it also does kind of suck for younger fans that want a Phase 2 Commander Cody but don't want to buy such a premium set that, you know, it could cost $300 to $350. I don't think younger fans um, are going to want to pay that premium. Um, and then getting the minifigure secondhand is probably going to be a lot of money, so I think this would have been the perfect set to put a Phase 2 Commander Cody in, and then maybe make a updated Rex as the coveted figure uh, for the UCS gunship. But obviously the picture is already out, and there's nothing we can do about it. And this updated Airborne Trooper looks really nice, um, but let's be fair, if this set, um, you know, to make this set actually worth $80, I think um, we should have had Cody in this set, but the Airborne Trooper should have been included too. So, Obi-Wan, Grievous, Airborne Trooper, Cody, and actually Magna Guard. You know, I, I really want an updated Magna Guard with m better printing, and looking back, we probably should have gotten one in the wheel bike set, but hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll get some more sets off of Utapau. You know, we could get... Um, I don't know, I'm going on a bit of a tangent, but like we can get a new Boga and a new um, Cody and a new wheel bike and a, um, and I, I don't know, I'm going on a bit of a tangent, but honestly, it's not I've been waiting for for a long time, and now that it's here, I'm a little disappointed, because that price is, <laughs> it's insane. Also, I'm surprised no one else has realized that this is the same uh, Obi-Wan from Mustafar, uh, the Mustafar dual set, and I'm just like, I get that Obi-Wan's, like, cloak was getting scarred up, you know, in the General Grievous fight, but, you know, the figure that we got in that set is accurate to Mustafar. You know, he wasn't as scraped up and, and battle damaged during the General Grievous fight than he was on Mustafar, you know? And the figure captures it perfectly. So, technically, we're getting a figure that has, like, burns on his shirt and stuff, and, I mean, Grievous, you know, he burnt Obi-Wan's, you know, cloak a little bit with his lightsabers, but, you know, on this figure, we have, like, accurate scars on his, on his costume that were only on the Mustafar battle. You know, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense, we should have just gotten the new Obi-Wan head on the old Obi-Wan body and called it a day. And I mean the old one, I mean like the 2014 one. I, I don't I don't really understand what was the point of putting the figure from the Mustafar duel in this. It makes it very inaccurate and there's some a, a little nitpick that I realized when I was looking at this picture. Alright, the four youth anniversary edition for Empire Strikes Back AT AT set. Um, honestly, I love the minifigure selection. How they're fitting both uh, AT AT drivers in the cockpit. Uh, I mean, you see it in the screenshot, but because uh, there's screenshots of the interior that I unfortunately don't like have right now, but like you see it in that. But when you look at the AT AT on the outside, it doesn't really make sense. But I'm just happy about it. The minifigure selection is amazing, in my opinion. 
Uh, I don't really get why they took the snow speeder off of store shelves. Um, the the 20th anniversary one. Because if you think about it, that would have been a, a, a perfect set to uh, go against this set. Um, but I, I don't really know what the whole point of that was. Um, but we do get a Luke as a rebel minifigure. Um, but just the, the selection, the general viewers, the fact that we get two drivers and two snowtroopers, I feel this is a lot more generous, and that generosity of minifigures should have been throughout this entire wave. I think in Anakin's Jedi Starfighter, uh, we probably should have gotten a clone trooper, because it's $30, the other ones were $20, so we probably just should have gotten like a blank clone trooper, as a minifigure or something like that and then you know in General Grievous's Starfighter I said add a Magna Guard and a Cody um and honestly this is where I think Lego's like generosity with minifigures really shows I mean obviously besides the 501st set that set is just a big thank you to us fans and is like probably the best Lego Star Wars set ever made um but I don't know, I just, looking at this, I, I really like this set, the interior looks amazing, whole set looks amazing, I just, I wish LEGO did put that emphasis um, on other sets uh, in this wave, but overall, I really do like all the sets in this wave, it's one of the better um, waves of the recent years. Alright, this one I don't have that much to say. It's um, it's not a complete re-release. There are some things that are changed. Um, but I remember, um, this one is the Death Star Final Duel, by the way. But this set was like originally a set from 2015. And for some reason, I just had this thing about that set. I think at the time, it was the only set that had the new Darth Vader helmet. I don't know, all I remember is that I really wanted that set, to be honest, now I have, I have no idea why. Um, you know, with this set uh, being released, or the pictures being released, I've had a look back on that old 2015 version. I don't really see what's so special about both. Um, I might get this, you know, in its, in, like, later in its lifetime as a LEGO set, um, when it goes on sale or whatever. But I'm not too interested in the set, but it's not bad. Apparently, the original one sold like hotcakes, so, you know, it makes sense why they're redoing it. But, uh, not much to say about this one. Uh, let's wrap this up with some of the final sets. I, I think that's, like, three or four more sets, so, uh, let's move on. Alright, so this is a very interesting set. Um, as someone who recently, well, not recently, it was, it was in November last year, so over six months ago, but um, as someone who's went to Galaxy's Edge and had a great time, I'm very excited to see this second release. This is actually inspired off of the Rise of Resistance, um, like the newer ride that came out in December, I think, and I really like this set. One thing, m &R Productions for a while has been um, uh, talking about a store exclusive. It was like a certain set number. And that set number was actually the set number of the last set, the Death Star Final Duel. But me personally, I think that this set is the one that's more likely to be a, a exclusive to LEGO and Disney stores because it's a LEGO set based off of a Disney park. Anyways, this is a picture of what the ship actually looks like. Honestly, really nice. Um, as someone who's planning on making a, a, um, a Batu mock, uh, this is definitely a no-brainer that I need to pick this up. And the minifigures, um, I don't necessarily know the deal with Lieutenant Beck, but uh, that girl, I do remember, if you guys go, it's one of my most viewed videos, but I actually recorded a video at Galaxy's Edge of Stormtroopers arresting her, because, well, um, like they, they're always like, acting. It's, it, Galaxy's Edge is really nice. And then also, on the Rise of Resistance ride, you go through like a, a first order star destroyer on these little speeders powered by these astromech droids and those are the black and red ones really sleek and nice looking design anyone working on first order ships or a first order base you know like rich boy j making his star killer base mock you know you need these um 
um, these astromech droids, these black and red ones. Such a sleek design. Gonk droid, I'm not sure how I feel about that brick built um, gonk droid with the eye being represented by a anti-stud. I'm not sure how I feel about that. You know, what they're doing to my dude, the donk, or the, the donk droid? No, the gonk droid. Um, but, you know, overall, it's actually a pretty nice set, and I will definitely be getting this. And just, you know, even though technically all these store exclusives you can pick up at the Lego store, I think this one I will be saving for my next uh, Disney Parks trip, just to make it sort of special when I do get the set, so, um, you know, and just for something to look forward to. Uh, and I think that's uh, really going to be cool. So, uh, I really like this set, and we're going to move on to the final one, which is the Advent Calendar. And if you're wondering why I'm not talking about the Razor Crest, well, the Razor Crest, I honestly, um, well, Razor Quest, uh, Razor Quest, Razor Crest, I already talked about the Razor Crest, the 501st Legion set, and the ATAT were the three sets revealed before all of these leaks came out. And I think revealing those three sets before all the other ones was definitely the right move, as those three sets are amazing sets. And, um, yeah, I will be reviewing the Razor Crest on its release date, along, if you guys are wondering, the sets I will be reviewing on the release date um, for this wave will be the 501st Legion set, the AAT, and General Graves' Starfighter. And then um, on September 1st, I will be grabbing the Razor Crest. And whenever the Advent Calendar comes out, because the Advent Calendars always come out a little later, I'm guessing maybe around the same time as the Razor Crest or even later than that, uh, I will be grabbing it. So this right here is the Advent Calendar. All right, the final build, um, it, or the final set, <laughs> is the Advent Calendar. Love the minifigure selection. Already have that ray, but honestly, I know a lot of people skipped out on the Pisana speeder chase and went straight to the, you know, the sets like the Millennium Falcon and the Kylo Ren shuttle. Um, so honestly, nice seeing her in this set. Um, that one battle droid looks like it has white printing, like for snow. Um, I'm wondering if that is the case or if that's just, you know, the artwork. Sith Trooper, um, I kind of wish they were introduced. I know that this is not Lego's fault, but I wish they were introduced in another Star Wars movie, like, earlier, just so they would be a little more significant, because these guys are really cool. Um, I love that build of Luke's hut. Um, getting a Luke figure is nice, uh, but also... You get two, ex also a pit droid, uh, it's it's off screen right now, I'll, I'll try to show it right now, but you get a pit droid, so that's useful for really any mocks, as almost every mock has some sort of a, a maintenance bay, or a platform, or a hangar, um, but the thing is, is we get two exclusive, um, also porg, <laughs> it's always nice getting a porg, um, but... Oh, and a Dio. Huh. A Dio and a Borg. I don't know. Those were in the background, guys. I didn't see them earlier. Um, but getting Poe Dameron in a Christmas sweater and Darth Vader in, in a Christmas sweater, it's two exclusive Christmas minifigures. They're stepping it up with these minifigures. I'm, I'm really happy that they're going back to exclusive minifigures, and hopefully this only continues to get better. Alright, I'll see you all later. Sorry that I was a bit tired making this video, as I kind of felt if I made it any later than when I'm filming it now, it would kind of just be 100% irrelevant and also would not fit into my YouTube schedule at all. Um, but anyways, uh, I hope you somehow enjoyed me rambling on in like the most um, like flat robotic voice. But anyways, I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys later. Alright, see y'all tomorrow.